Hello viewers, SuperGT here. Welcome back to the ultimate slipstreaming festival here at Tokyo East Outer Loop. I think that's what it is. Something along those lines. There's so many of these tracks I can't even remember which is which. But anyway, let the sucking begin down this extremely long straight here at Tokyo. Tokyo Expressway, there we go. Set on that barrier. Uh, banner very conveniently for me so start is 14th once again carrying on my absolute mediocrity by qualifying in the midfield but well, we're going to try to push our way forward not literally but maybe maybe that'll happen we'll see so Toyota up ahead and well it's a mix of cars we've got the manufacturer series here and I go wide kind of distracted by this VW which went a little bit wide and he just comes out of that ghost exactly the wrong moment I was hoping to go through him didn't happen we'll probably overtake him later as he has a five second penalty for what looked like him getting absolutely shafted himself and then gets a penalty for it very very convenient so this track was um, or is very notorious for penalties actually because of all of the walls which you can see on either side of the track there's no room for error here and should you hit one of those walls you're into destination penalized which will really mess up the race so let's see how we can do as we're just trying to hold off the uh, Peugeot of all cars from behind coming to this last uh, sweeping chicane so I really characterise this track by, you've got this, on one end of the track you've got lots of fast sweeping corners and then you've got a very long straight, so it's, it's really a track of two halves and the Toyota which we can see on the right hand side of us, we can't really see it, it's on my right hand side though um, there it is there, that's really good round though, the, round the corners but it's not so good down the straight as these guys get all out of shape, he's getting a penalty, this guy's serving a penalty and I've moved from 14th up into 9th, which is about to turn into 8th. And the crucial thing around here is the slipstream down this main straight. And you can see the gap to the cars ahead as they go through there and I come through there, uh, there with this big group in tow. Was about a second, which isn't enough for the slipstream. So I wasn't quite within the, uh, the sucking activation zone, the SAZ for short. And you can see how much time you lose. You lose a lot of time. If you are just within that slipstream range, you can gain a second on this whole straight. It is quite ridiculous how much you can lose or gain based on that. So you do need to really get yourself into position coming into that final hairpin where you are in the slipstream range. And, well, we got ourselves a nice three-second penalty there. I think someone was just on our left-hand side as we come out of turn one. And I've just pinched him against the wall. So... It's going from okay to good, and then back to bad again. As um, we're going to go back down a couple of positions. We'll see how it goes though. The Jaguar that I'm driving here in uh, Group 3, of course, actually fairly decent in terms of straight line speed. So that does help around this track with the 2 kilometer main straight. So very, very useful. But I think the main thing, even still with that, even a slow car in a straight line, as long as you're in the slipstream, that's really the key. And that's uh, yeah, I mean that's the key to unlocking potential around the circuit. Just being in the slipstream, it helps so much. If you're not in it, then you're going backwards basically. Coming into the hairpin, then almost into the back of the GTR. Not quite though, as he tries to go for a pass back on the Peugeot on the exit, kind of gets hemmed in. I'm just going to go on his left hand side. Is there enough space? Just about. Not the cleanest move, I'm going to serve this penalty anyway. As we go down, how many positions? Oh my god, down to 15th. So we're just going to have to tuck into that slipstream once again, although I think I've dropped out even more down another position, down to 16th. Now I can finally tuck in to the slipstream of the big boy Atenza. So back down to 17th just shows you how close this is. I mean, if you watch my previous video about it's getting tougher around Brands Hatch, it really is just very close these days. The margins are just getting closer and closer and closer, and any mistake, any penalty that you get, 
is it's just really going to mess your race up because everyone's just so close these days. I mean, you can just look at look at the map. Everyone is pretty much within two corners. So from first to last is probably about. I mean, I'm in the fifteenth and I'm within nine and a half seconds of the leader. And last place is right on my tail there. So it's like eleven seconds from last to first, which is quite a small field spread. It's like an average of like half a second between each car, which is very very small. And this is the way I this is the way I like it. You know, I want it to be close, even if I'm finishing towards the back. As long as you can have a close race, a good battle, then then I'm happy. So fifteenth, not ideal. We've we've lost one position from where we started after a, a very good initial salvo on lap one, going past quite a few of uh, a few of the cars ahead, but then dropping back uh, back down because of the penalty. And it just shows you how much of a difference it makes to get that penalty. It really messes up your race, it really does. But there's still potential to get it back on track. There's plenty of time left for that. We have um, tire tire wear is not too bad. It's not well it's not it's noticeable, but it's not too bad. As a, as again, you're spending half the time on straight as that Lamborghini is spending spending some time facing the wrong way and there's someone else going slow there. So this is something we can rely on in this race especially. Three people overtaken there just coming out of that on, onto this bay, uh, onto this main straight. So people making it people having incidents, having crashes, getting penalties. It's happened to me, it could happen to other people, and well it will happen to other people. So we move back into twelfth. I'm going down to lean setting six, so this is the important thing here. There's no point in wasting fuel by being at the front of the queue, so I might as well just drop back by going to lean setting six, save fuel and then just uh, slipstream the guys ahead. So it's a, it's a weird strategy around this race. We kind of slingshot past each other, save fuel when you're behind, and just try to minimise fuel use overall, as there will be a pit stop in this race. You can do a no stop, but you're probably going to die of death, so it's not really advisable. And coming through turn two, again, just down this section, I'm in the slipstream. I don't need to push so much always on power setting one. I can go down a couple of settings just to save a little bit of fuel as we're presumably going to come in at the end of this lap as um, odd number amount of laps so they normally I think most of the FIA races they set an odd number of laps which kind of splits the strategy makes it a little bit more interesting when it's, e when it's an even number it will just come in half exactly halfway through the race whereas this it gives you a bit of a choice come in lap 4 or come in lap 5 get the undercut get the overcut makes it a little bit more variable. As we go a little bit wide here, the tyres beginning to feel the strain, but again, still in the slipstream range, so we're okay. And as long as you're in slipstream range, coming out of this hairpin that we're about to come up to, then it's fine. Looking for the sign, there's a green sign there, you can see just up above, and you're braking just underneath that, and it just sets you in nicely to this corner, as you can see there. Waiting for a late apex, and then straightening up, uh, straightening up as much as you can on the exit get a more direct acceleration point. So David Perrell in the slipstream there, I think he was racing at very last at very last notice and didn't really put too much practice in. Hence his lowly position here behind Super GT of all people. So into the pit lane we go. I think the fuel amount was okay. It wasn't great but wasn't too bad at the same time. So on with the new tyres and in with some more fuel. And we're going to leave with about 80% or 81%. So still 16th now. Is it all going to come flying past us? No. So 16th at this point here. And we still have, again, still plenty of time to rescue something. I don't know how many people did or didn't pit. There might be some people we still have to go past who will pit at the end of lap number 5. And immediately go back into 15th. Courtesy of my great friend Slipstream. I, you know, I, I'm a patron of that religion now. And um, this is this is basically the mecca of the Slipstream religion, this, this long straight here. And any true Slipstreamer will have to make their once-in-a-lifetime pilgrimage to this sacred site, at least once in their life. So back into 12th, courtesy of a couple of people going to the pit lane and again not worried about the BMW coming past it's just one of those races where you're kind of happy to let people go past it doesn't matter too much 
you can just slipstream them for a lap and then you go back past them and then slowly work your way towards the guy in front and 10th and 11th aren't too far away so we started 14th, got up to 8th temporarily, back down to 17th or 16th, I can't even remember and then we're looking like a, a top 10 is potential again so a bit of a topsy-turvy race going up, going down and hopefully we can get into that top 10 I'm always happy with a top 10 I think in, in split 2 it's... Um, pretty much the upper limit of my ability if I get a really if I can nail a qualifying if I can just nail a qualifying and start towards the front let's say top six and even just finish sixth, I'll be really happy with that but it's just very difficult because in qualifying it's just so so close the margin so fine I've seen a video recently where, um, where from first to last it was less than a second on the grid really close so I mean even if, if, if you feel like two taps quicker you might have gained like five, five, six positions. It was really close, and just shows you how fine the margins are. And again, that's that's the way we like it. Into the hairpin, into the back of the BMW, almost, almost muller him. And again, into that slipstream range. The triple suck activation point has been activated here, as we are in. We're actually in the fourth car in this queue, as we come up the uh, back straight here. Now, what you're about to see, honestly, this is absolutely mental, okay? I just, I just wanted to pause it there for a bit of a warning. So, watch this, okay? We're going to go past this guy. Okay, easy enough. And we've got, actually, we've got three cars there. So, I'm, I was the fifth car in the train. The gap is coming down to the car ahead. To, it was 0.9, coming down to less than 0.8. So, we're in the suck zone, prime suck zone, activated. So, watch, watch this, man. This is absolutely crazy tucked in fully to maximize the drag loss and we go flying past all three of them we're at four abreast temporarily and i've gained four positions or one straight how about that straight back into ninth the jaguar doing bits here absolutely doing bits i've, I've mugged them all right off I've obviously prayed to the slipstream gods a lot more than they have but you see just how ridiculous that was i was at the beginning of the straight a second off. I was, I was a second away from those three and I managed to get the slingshot on the BMW put me in a position to then get the slingshot on all three of them. It was absolutely crazy. When have you ever seen that? Probably not very often. That was pretty crazy. So now I have the problem of holding off all four of these guys behind and um, it's not always an easy thing to do because the down the main straight it's almost impossible. It's just basically impossible to hold someone off if they've timed their slipstream correctly and we have two laps in order to try and do that but I'm just planning the strategy from here because it might be a point still just to let them go on this lap and then try to retake them on the next lap it's, it's, it's such a weird race in terms of strategy because actually letting people go past is a viable strategy it's, it's very strange how it works but it, it kind of does so into the hairpin lap number seven two to go and we're not quite within range of DMR, uh, DMR Johnny in 8th uh, place so very difficult to catch him but once again it's just really a fight between myself and the guys immediately behind so I've got it into setting 1 I've got 2 laps of fuel remaining with 2 laps of the race remaining as we cross the line here so you see actually it's, there's a bit of a split in the, in, the, in the group here so there was 5 of us at the beginning of the last lap and there's only 3 in this immediate group here so myself the Audi and the Peugeot, where the BMW and the Atenza have kind of just dropped off out of that slipstream range, crucially. So I'm going to let the Audi go, and is the Peugeot going to go up the inside as well? Just switch that radar to make sure I know exactly where he is. Okay, he goes up the inside. That's not really a problem too much at this point here. We can still rescue this as long as I keep within range. We have uh, the next lap down the main straight to try to get back past. So it's not too much of an issue. Later on in the lap, as we then come through the sweeping left-hander down the hill towards the hairpin for the second to last time. The Peugeot is looking up the inside. I think he wants the lead now. It's not always the best place to go for it because you might as well wait. I'm going to use the wall as a cheeky break there because I was going to go flying into the back of the Audi and I was lucky to not get a penalty for that. But uh, we get through unscathed, penaltyless. Audi all over the place. You can see the tyre wear really affecting him now. 
So, Peugeot tucks in and oh, kind of uh, hems me in there. So I was going to go for it, but then I don't think I would have had the space anyway because I would have been hemmed into the left-hand side of the track. So I think the better option here is you look at the gaps between our group of three here and the group of three behind. I'm just going to put it into lean setting six just so that I can really attack during the later part of this lap. So you can see they're just pretty much just pushing the Audi up, up the straight, trying to just get past that Peugeot. We are slowly doing that because I have the slipstream, he doesn't. Finally pulling out to the left-hand side and going back into uh, lean setting one. As we come through here, I wanted to ideally be behind the Audi, but the, the uh, Peugeot hung in there and managed to keep the position of 10th. So again, it's really a case of just trying to stick in this position as close as we can and seeing if we can go, go about getting that final position coming up to the line. So fast falling through this lap and I, I began to drop off a little bit worryingly. There was someone slow there. We all gained a position. So I'm actually up into the top 10 now. So eighth position is possible. Looking for the move into the hairpin, he covers it off. So we're going to have to go deep, cut back from the later apex and then go into the slipstream for the one final time up to the straight, up to the, oh, sorry, up to the finish line. Let's see if it can be possible. Is it possible to get from 10th up to 8th from here to the finish line? The Jaguar has got good top end. The Audi is vulnerable with no slipstream ahead. The finish line is just there. It's not quite going to be enough. But as we come up to the line, I think the Audi ran out of fuel. The uh, the Peugeot went to the back of him, went into the wall, and then <laughs> the Audi got a five second penalty, which was absolutely ridiculous because well, I mean, let's look at it again. I think the Audi runs out of fuel. The Peugeot goes into the back of him, touches the wall. That gives the Audi a penalty. Obviously, completely undeserved, unless he brake checked him. I don't think he did. I think he just ran out of fuel. Now, here's another example of the same thing, how he can be manipulated. So you just drive into the back of the car ahead and then hit the wall. And then, lo and behold, the car ahead gets a penalty. So it's a really weird situation that seems to be happening quite a lot now where you tap someone, go into the wall, that person gets a penalty. Very silly. Ultimately, we finished ninth, which I'm kind of happy about. We gained five positions overall, and it was a it was a really good race actually, very tactical, and uh, it was just a good one. Without that penalty, maybe could have finished uh, potentially eighth or seventh, a little bit higher, but still happy with the result. Let me know your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed the video as always. Subscribe if you're new to the channel, and if you did enjoy, maybe consider hitting the like button. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.